go ahead and get started. We're a few minutes past, and I'm sure people will keep jumping on um, when they can join. But my name is Courtney Burge. Good morning to all of you. Um, I work for Monogram um, out of our Monogram Design Center in Chicago when we're able to be there in person. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. I just have a couple things to share and then I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Chef John, because, um, you know, he's the fun part. That's what you came to see. So um, we designed this Table Talk series as an opportunity to bring together this wonderful community to provide education, inspiration from designers, and of course, cuisine conversations with our executive chef and some special guests. Um, so thank you again for being here. Monogram is the luxury appliance line from GE Appliances. At Monogram, we believe it's the details that define us, and it is not just one detail, it's many. When you put them all together, you create appliances that look, feel, and perform as if they were designed perfectly for you. When we launched our two new statement, our two new collections earlier this year, all of our products were designed around three pillars, materials, performance, and ownership. And I need to go on to my next slide. So as we talk about gas cooktops today, I want to share how these three pillars are incorporated into our gas cooktops. Material, materials are always a priority, and you can see our assessed gas cooktop features brass burner accents for the ultimate and elegant styling. The metal's golden hues and built-in resilience bring both beauty and functionality. Our precision knobs with embedded sapphire glass I have a strength, are second only to diamonds in strength. The timeless scratch resistant glass illuminates when in use, making it easy to adjust to the perfect temperature. You can see those in the upper left hand corner. When we speak to performance, our sealed du dual flame stack burners provide complete 140 degree simmer to a rapid boil flexibility on all of our burners, including our tri ring burner, which provides 20,000 BTUs for high output cooking. Finally, our third pillar is ensuring a top-notch ownership experience. One piece of this is creating Wi-Fi connected pieces, which give you the freedom and flexibility to control your gas cooktop functions from your smartphone. That's all I have for now, but I do want to um, share a couple reminders and housekeeping items um, before we get started, just so you can make sure you get the most functionality out of Microsoft Teams today. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing this screen. And I think most of you are old pros now, but I will share um, a couple things just to show you around. So can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Great. OK, so first of all, we, we will mute you all um, and no offense. We want to hear your lovely voices, but this is just to cut down on background noise while Chef John's cooking, but feel free to unmute yourself if at any point you want to ask a question or you can use this little hand button um, to raise your hand and that way we'll know that you have something you want to talk to us about. Um, we have our chat box. So this little button here, if you um, click on show conversation, it's going to pop open our chat window um, where you can talk to us, ask questions. Um, so feel free to use that. You can see Corwin has shared the recipes that we're going to be creating today. Not we, Chef John. Um, so save those for later if you want to cook along with us. And then finally, I'm going to ask you to click on this show participant button. And it's going to open up that list of, well, let me do it again. It's going to open up that list of participants. And I would like you to scroll until you see John Liddell. Um, and then when you see his name in your screen, just click on these three dots to give you more options. And then I would like you to pin chef john to your screen and that way you'll get him front and center and have the best viewing experience for today's culinary conversations um so with no further ado i think that's all our housekeeping i will turn it over to chef john to get started today all right thank you so much courtney i appreciate appreciate that introduction of what's going to be happening today and a little bit about what's going to be happening um 
from now on every Thursday with our monogram table talks. Again, I'm so excited to be a part of that. If you guys don't know me, I'm Chef John, executive chef down here at the Monogram Design Center in Chicago. I take care of demonstrations and now I take care of virtual trainings as well. So I love being in front of you guys. I love um, the, the opening conversations with a lot of my, my friends and coworkers out there. Um, so let's please, during this, this demonstration, keep that going. I love to be interrupted because it, it, it takes us into a new um, question, a new topic, and I wanna answer them as you guys um, come up with them. So give them to me, whether you unmute yourself and turn your, your camera on and ask the question, or just go ahead and type it into that chat box. I want them all. But like Corwin said, or yeah, Courtney said, we're gonna be doing these Thursday conversation table talks um, from now until the foreseeable future. And I think what we've gained from this is the connection with you guys and, and to be able to share with you some interesting information in a light way, as well as a recipe. And what I'm even more excited about as we move on into these Thursday um, events, we're gonna add more speakers and some guests with me, whether they're in the room or not, I don't know, they'll be virtual. So we're gonna bring in some other chefs, maybe they're monogram chefs, maybe they're one of your favorite chefs from, from, from your area that you'd like to connect us with, um, but we're also going to bring in designers. Some of these designers have had restaurant experience and are designing their own home kitchens based off of their chef experience. So there's a lot of playful and fun conversations. I think that will engage us all and just give us food for thought as, as we move forward. And hopefully it will help us create more opportunities for us to grow and expand um, our design knowledge, our cooking knowledge, and, and most importantly, right, appliance knowledge. And on these Thursday conversations, I don't really go like really deep into the details of, of the appliance that I'm cooking on. I focus on some of the chefy things. Of course, I'll give you some of those features. But what we really try to focus on is a conversation and a, and a recipe. And today is, I think, the last day that we haven't released the whole conversation piece. Um, but I'm going to really focus on the gas cooktop like we told you, but most specifically the griddle, because I think the griddle is just a great universal piece that um, we do well in pro ranges, we do well, well in cooktops, we do well in induction, and then the best thing for me is I can kind of take those griddles during the summer months and take them out to my grill and continue to cook on them outdoors. So I'm going to talk about the versatility, not only indoors, but of course, how I like to use mine outdoors. Um, before we get into that, I know we've shared the recipe with you guys. I'm going to make my island dusted crab cakes for you. Uh, I think it's a fun recipe. Um, I cleaned up some of my recipes that I'm releasing to you guys. Um, so they're a little bit more pantry ready. I think this one may be a, a little bit more complicated, uh, um, desires a few more ingredients. But for all of us around the country, I think this is something that we want to we want to do more of and eat more fresh of. So I'll share that recipe and then I'm going to put together a remoulade. And then, of course, you know, even though it's my recipe, I still change my own recipe, guys. So you're welcome to do the same. I'm going to add some avocado and some fresh tomato in there and just jazz it up. Because whether you have it on hand or you haven't had it in a long time, those are the ingredients that we like to add to elevate our meals. So guys, today I'm on my 36 inch gas cooktop. It's an all gas cooktop. It's got a big drawer um, underneath of it that I store all my pots and pans. So it proves that this cooktop drafts very shallow. Um, pretty, pretty cool installation. Um, we kind of recess into the countertop just a little bit here. 36 inches, five burners. Great thing about that. Easy part about my job, 30 inches five burners as well. So you still get the griddle on a 30 inch, you still get 62,000 BTU. Um, the way we kind of arrange those BTU is below the griddle surface here, 10,000, 10,000, 20,000, 10,000 up here uh, front right, and then the, or sorry, back right, and then front right, we go up to 12,000. Why? Because I think we all kind of gravitate, um, a lot of right-handers out there to cooking on that 12,000 BTU burner right there. So great layout, so many features to this dish. But once again, we're gonna kind of focus on the, the, uh, the griddle. Um, guys, do you, oh, I know what I forgot. Now, I am going to give you a feature of the monogram gas cooktop throughout this presentation. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to pepper you with a little information. I promise you I have not said it yet. But when I ask the question, I will require for you guys to uh, type in the chat box the answer with the correct spelling. And the first person that gets it sometime in the next 
40 minutes, I'll ask the question. The first person that, that gets it correct gets this great monogram spoon rest right there. I got the monogram M in there, just like I got on my chest today. And that's made out of, um, I believe it's, it's, it's a polished stone and wood, and it's just so attractive. So whoever gets that question right, we'll send that off. And I'm sure there might be something else in the box for you guys too. So pay attention and look out for that. Now, crab cakes. We've got people, folks from Florida on the call. We got folks from East Coast, West Coast, all over. And then up here in, in non-crab country of Chicago, right? These are not Chicago River crabs or anything like that. The best crab I think you can use is that blue, that Maryland, uh, Maryland crab, um, just a little sweeter. That cold water is really what did, does it for us. I've made crab cakes out of warm water crabs when I was living in the uh, Virgin Islands. We had what are called spider crabs, and they're they're huge. They're gigantic. They almost make a um, uh, a king crab look small, and they're just so sweet because of the warm water down there. But there's not they're not plentiful, so we would catch them for ourselves, snare them, and go on a big crazy underwater ride with them as they pulled us around, and then pick the meat and make crab cakes. But for for this purpose, blue Maryland crab is the best. Is this blue Maryland, Maryland crab? No, it's not, because that's really expensive. And I, you know, I don't want to just waste anything like that. But for this purpose, you can use a lot of different types of crab. There's great jumbo lump crabs out of there out there that are a canned product. Um, pick what you like, and that's what's in your price range. Anywhere from 13 bucks a pound, guys, up to probably like $32 a pound. So you decide where you want to land on your crab cake. So we start with about a half pound of that. I didn't have yellow peppers today. You might not have yellow peppers in your garden yet. I have some red pepper. So we're gonna start with that instead of the yellow pepper like it reads on the recipe. And again, maybe you grow poblano. So you mix in a little poblano with that. And then if you're that spice person, you got a little bit of jalapeno, you wanna take it to the next level, go ahead and do a little bit of jalapeno, more or less. Remember, if you take the seeds out of there, um, you won't uh, get so much heat in the dish. We'll scoop up those, put them right in there. Scallions or white onion. I grow both in my garden. Of course, they're not ready yet. So I've got some white onion out of the pantry. Down Island dust or small island dust. This is a blackening seasoning that I make. And I created this down in the Virgin Islands and it goes with chicken and pork and seafood. Um, we can share that recipe with you in the future if we haven't yet, but this is just so delicious. This is a, like, I don't know how many ingredients, 10, 12 extra ingredients to your crab cake. So if you wanna replace this, go with the Cajun seasoning. Go with even a, a blackening or a barbecue seasoning that you really care for. Use that and then just kind of adjust it to taste. This has a little bit of cayenne in there and then bourbon smoked paprika um, down from Louisville at, at Bur Bourbon Barrel Foods. They smoke the paprika with chipped up um, basically maker's marks, mark uh, barrels. Gives it a nice flavor. Got a little bit of mustard. Whenever I'm doing my mise en place or prepping out, I take my little portions of things and just put them on spoons like that. So that when I'm ready, you can just tap it in there, scrape it off if you need to. And it's a perfect clean portion. Of course, we got some melted butter. You guys know I use my five in one oven to melt that butter. It's got a melt setting. So I just hit the button, turn around. And when it's ready, it gives me an audible alarm. Ooh, we've got some lime zest here. You guys ever use a microplane at home? Have you seen one of these? It's not your traditional grater. This is actually a tool that was created in the manufacturing industry, and they used to use it to shave like I mean, probably smaller than millimeters, but again, I'm not a manufacturing guy, but it was connected to a machine that would shave metal. And then the company decided, um, or I think it was the, the gentleman or no, it was the, the woman's husband that took it home and he started grating cheese with that product. And then they made microplanes. So a microplane makes very fine shavings on our citrus. So you can see just the white down there. We want the citrus off, we want the zest off, but that white part is actually called the pit. And the pith is bitter and doesn't make our food taste good. So to have a very finely manufactured product like this, 
um, really takes us to the next level. So why not pair Microplane, who has done a whole lot of manufacturing in their life, with Monogram, who has very much done a whole lot of manufacturing with their life, and they make beautiful dishes together. So again, a little bit of that lime zest in there. It's kind of fun. And again, you do not have to do what I'm doing here. Like, I'm making it look good, right? Oh yeah, I'm working hard and you bang it up. That's not necessary. It's all part of the show, but do that at home. Cooking's a messy sport. Get dirty with it. So we've got a little bit of that in there. Then we're gonna just take our blade. I'm using a, a really great uh, Cutco blade today. Friend of mine actually had my, uh, my name, I don't know if you can see it on there, Chef John engraved into it. I always know it's not mine, you know, so when Courtney and Corwin and Alex come back to the showroom, they, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, look at what John got for me. No way. So we cut that right in half. And then just like my microplane, I like gadgets, guys. You know, I mean, we could load up our kitchen with some of the funnest gadgets for, you know, probably a few hundred bucks and be happy the rest of our life. Just a juicer here, but it's got a couple of different compartments. So you push this one down if you want to put a lemon in there but what's smaller than a lemon, a lime. So you push that one over to squeeze your lime juice. And we'll put that right in. Hey, John. Yeah. Quick question. You're showing us all these fun gadgets. Where do you purchase a lot of them? You're showing us, you're showing us a lot of these. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, huh, okay. Okay, go ahead, I can, yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. So you're showing us all these fun gadgets. Where do you purchase a lot of them at? Oh, wow. That's a great question. You know, because I think it's kind of like a travel thing, like where you, you, you go into a kitchen store and, you know, I'm not, I do go to Bed Bath & Beyond. I do go to those big box stores. I do hit that, that small online store that we've all used, Amazon. I've used that before a couple of times. Um, but I do like the small kitchen stores where I really get to have that interaction with, with people because how else are you gonna get to know the monogram story? How else are you gonna get to know the microplane story unless you talk to somebody that's in the know, that knows the story, that adds um, to, to what you're doing. So there's a ton of resources out there, um, but a lot of times it's on, on travel that I buy these things because they pack very easily and I can take them all home with me and I get to meet somebody, somebody new. Um, but if I'm in a pinch and just really trying to supply, um, like say a restaurant or a showroom, uh, probably a bigger box store. So guys, I added some breadcrumbs down into there. Um, spoon, there we go. We've got a little bit of egg yolk in there. I think we're gonna do some salt and pepper. and a little bit of chopped cilantro. And then we're just gonna give that a really nice mix. And I might have to add just a little bit more liquid. Now remember, no matter what crab you use for this dish, um, it could be drier, it could be fresher, it could be less fresh, I should say. And uh, you might have to adjust the breadcrumbs to make it pack right, to absorb moisture or you might have to add just a little extra mayonnaise, sour cream, something like that to bind it. So as soon as I started to bring that mayonnaise in there, a little extra liquid, it starts to come together and activate the breadcrumbs that I put in there. And I didn't have any breadcrumbs in the house, but I knew I had some butter crackers. So what crab really likes is butter. So I just used some butter crackers in there and smashed them up real well. And now that we got that mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and kind of get into our conversation about griddle cooking and my love for griddle cooking and the idea behind griddle cooking. Now on the Monogram gas cooktop, I, I normally say that we have so much technology, so much power and accessory into this unit using different materials that it starts to rival uh, other brands range tops, where range tops could come with a griddle in there, high BTU burners and, and all of that fun, those fun things. And where a range top has the knobs set on the front, a cooktop is kind of cut down into the countertop and has all of our knob system here. The reason I say this rivals other folks' range tops or even the tops of their ranges is because of that BTU we start out with. 
Uh, Courtney said we had a tri-ring burner here in the center, 20,000 BTU. It allows me to take that big cast iron pan, extra large cookware, and pop it on there and provide enough heat to make more pasta, to make more scallops, um, to do more cooking, and not only do it um, do more, but to do it quicker and more even. I said tri-ring, I didn't just say one ring. So we actually get where this little um, brass accent is, and this brass accent comes with your, your cooktop there, or you can also get little brass accents on any of the other burners too. So you can replace those down. You can just use these as show pieces when, you know, Joe comes over for dinner and you really want to impress him. You could, you could just put your brass burners on for that purpose because we can get you some black ones too if brass is not your thing. But here in the center where this little brass fitting goes down, it's tri-ring, so it means it has Three rings, right? And in the center of that big 20,000 BTU flame is another smaller flame. So even on a large pot like this, even coverage. So more cooking, even coverage, even faster. So in the center, we got that tri-ring cooking. Now, I love that burner. It does a whole lot for us, but it's important to know that range of temperatures. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We need high temperature, we need low temperature. Whether we're at 10,000 BTU, 12,000 BTU, or 20,000 BTU on the high end, all five of our burners can go down to that 140 degree temperature. Meaning we can just kind of babysit a butter sauce. Um, we can do um, keep your mashed potatoes warm, all kinds of fun things. Excuse me one second, just grab. I forget how fun it is to be back in the kitchen with all my gadgets. I can always, I can always pull out something else, you know, and I'm doing it the hard way here. So um, portion scoop. We used to see these growing up in high school, you know, when you got your sloppy joes in the lunch line and they did give you a couple uh, servings of that. Well, we use these in the restaurant business because it portions out exactly what we need to serve. If I did my food cost at an eight ounce portion, I better have an eight ounce scoop every time also helps us keep things uniform and keep things clean. Even at home, now, instead of getting my hands dirty, I take my little crab cake mixture, portion it out, and now every time I scoop onto the griddle, it's a perfect scoop. Next, we're gonna just take a little bit of butter here. Hey, Chef John. Yeah. Couple questions on your preparing those. Um, Brian wanted to know, is there a benefit to the brass burner tips or is it just purely a look? No, there's a huge benefit. I mean, I think with a little brass accent in there, anyone that comes to your house is going to be that much more impressed. So the, the benefit is all about the, about the show. We're not going to get a benefit on the food flavor there, but it benefits your style. It benefits um, the design around your, your kitchen. So I think sometimes when we feel better while we're cooking, because we're surrounded by creature comforts, even if they don't make our food taste better, they make the cooking process that much more enjoyable, customized to you to you and tailored to you, to you so i've always said that there's there's that monogram has so many features again that don't translate to the food they translate to the heart so yeah it definitely benefits uh your, your food awesome and then beth would like to know any secret techniques for meal prepping for some of us novice chefs out there that you know aren't experts yeah. is there anything we can do to prep to make our lives a little easier Sure, you know, it's not a big secret out there. There's a lot of chefs that need work right now. So just go ahead and hire one. Um, bring them in, give them a, give them a room. <laughs> now, um, there's a ton of, of, of ideas. So let's take a tomato, for instance, um, or a pepper or an onion. So I've seen and I've been in a lot of people's refrigerators. I, I have permission, I'm cooking for them, you know, and I'm looking through their stuff, trying to make room for what I brought in to cater for them. And you might see like a half a tomato in there or a pepper with just one side cut off or an onion that's a quarter or a, or a half peel. When you get your produce and you go shopping, let's say on Sunday, and you're gonna make a big Sunday meal, if that pepper is only gonna last you four or five days, only touch and cut it once. So when you break down that pepper, you slice it, dice it all the way through, clean it up, get rid of the mess, 
and then get a nice storage container. And depending on what kind of refrigeration you have, um, you may need to line it with a paper towel, towel to keep the moisture out. Um, but you get a nice locking storage container. That way, when you come home on Thursday and you're like, oh, darn it, I forgot what I was going to do for dinner tonight, but I've got some ground meat and some peppers and onions, you can throw things together very quickly instead of getting out cutting boards and everything else. So I like to prep everything at home the same way I do it here at work, one time, once a week, and then we go, we, we move forward. There's different restaurants and circumstances. Of course, you don't want to cut a, a, a pepper on Sunday and try to use it the next Sunday. So that's kind of turns into soup if you need to do that. Thank you. I'm not sure it has a half a pepper and like a quarter of an onion just sitting and chopped in their fridge. So I'm going to work on only prepping once. That makes sense. Um, you know, yeah, I get that. Let me just add one more thing and, and, uh, before you get to the next question, if there is one. Um, but I really do. When I said that soup comment, I will. if I've got extra peppers, it's just my wife and I in the house and my dogs don't like carrots and peppers. So if, if we're going to throw those away or they're going to go bad, I will take them in a, in a baggie or a, a Ziploc or a glass container and put them in the freezer and just freeze them up. And then when I have the leftover quarter or half a chicken, I can add that to soup, make a really nice chicken noodle soup with some veggies in there and use up everything and waste and waste nothing. So it's another one of those prep steps. Well, don't do the prep and then throw it out. At least save it for soup or something in the future. Awesome. One question. Does the griddle come with the uh, yeah, absolutely. So as we kind of transition transition into that chat, um, it's one thing, it's not one of the things that I just really love about the Monogram brand is that we're built for beauty. You've seen the materials, but we're built, built for performance and the ownership side too. So we don't just say, wouldn't you like to do this? And for a few extra hundred dollars, we'll give it to you. No, we give you everything to cook. So this griddle comes with the cooktop. And the beautiful part is it's removable, guys. So if you want to take it off to clean it or you want to utilize all five burners there, you can. But I had to use two hands because this is cast iron. This is heavy. This is the best griddle you can put on this cooktop. Why? Because we built it that way. We built it to harness the energy of those 10,000 BTU burners below it. Um, with a big thick cook surface, it absorbs more heat, spreads it more evenly. So if you start to overload your griddle, um, the temperature stays high. When we talk about sauteing or searing things, what we don't want to do is have the temperature go high, low, high, low. We want a constant or a, a constant temperature, not an average of where it's been. Uh, saute means high heat, little oil, just like we're doing here, not high heat, low heat, high heat. So when we give you proper burners, proper cooking surface, you get a better end result. We, the um, the home chef or the, the, the chef, we take it, uh, all the credit for those results. And we want you to, but we know it's the monogram engineering team and, and all of the research and development that we put into this that allows you to have the right heat, the right griddle for the right results when you're cooking. So whether you're doing three crab cakes or you're loading this up with pancakes and eggs and bacon and sausage and steaks and charred broccoli and asparagus, um, you could use this as, as, as um, many other cultures do, where it could be a tebanyaki. You want to chop on there? Hey, go to town. I'll even, I've got some knives that will probably never hold an edge again in their life. You know, so that's where I want to cut on metal with it and just and just have some fun. Um, the, you know, the chopa or the Argentinian flat cooktops every um every culture around the world has a version of this so the idea of cooking on a griddle is not just for eggs i mean you can you you um if you google any of those cultures you will find something you can do on your griddle with and this griddle obviously we built it to be indoors we built it to rival um pro ranges and ranges out there giving you the correct um, materials and everything but one of my favorite things um, about Monogram is whether you're on our pro range or your induction, our induction cooktop, cooktops, they come with
accessory. It comes with it, all right? So your Pro Range, if you get a griddle with it, it's in there. We don't, you don't have to change anything about it. But the idea is we give this style of cooking throughout our brand. And then my favorite thing to do come summertime or even sometimes in the winter is I kick on my outdoor grill. And when I kick on my outdoor grill, what goes with me? My griddle. And if you don't have a griddle, make a really bad version of what we have here. But I do this at home too. It's just a sheet tray with aluminum foil. You take that bad boy out to your grill, set it right on top, set your griddle right on top. If you've got a nice cast iron pan, you can take that out to your grill and set it on top. And that's maybe where you want to do your potatoes, your corn hashes. You're, you could do some of your vegetables that you're so sick of chasing down through the grates right on your griddle now. You ever make shrimp on a grill? Yeah, it's great. It gets a nice char. But some of those smaller ones, or if you, got, if you, if you have them falling through, you might want to use a griddle. The other, op the other thing that this adds is a platform for us to cook food in butter. And it's hard to cook food in butter on a grill or oil on a grill, avocado oil, whatever you like, or no butter. Um, you can put it right down in there and get those brown butter seared scallops, burnt butter shrimp, one of my favorite. Um, but what I a lot of times do at home is I'm doing my potatoes, my spuds, my caramelized onions for my burgers, my mushrooms on, on that griddle. And it just adds a nice way to get more experience on the griddle and make your grill surface that much more interesting. So I love that we bring it inside. I just hope everybody realizes that we can take it outside too. Now, y'all can probably see as I grab these guys here. Uh, can you smell that? Oh yeah, looking good. Nice little lift out of it. Yeah, there you go, Joe, get closer. Thank you, oh yeah. <laughs> you can see no matter where I grab these, We've got some evenness in cooking. So that griddle does a nice job of spreading the heat. So one thing I really enjoy about a griddle, it's a perfect pan. Do you know the best pan is that heavy pan? Like I said about cast iron, it absorbs more heat. The more heat it absorbs, so the more crab cakes I can put on before the temperature drops. The next best thing about it being a perfect pan is, and maybe you guys have, have heard this one before, but we'll see. Um, this pan right here, I can fit four chicken breasts in perfectly. Do you know how many chicken breasts I always put in there? Five. <laughs> so I always put five. I always overload the pan. And then you've got your spatula and you're digging around and you're trying to flip things. And, and it, there's too much liquid in there and it's overloaded. Look at this surface here. I can come from this angle, I can come from this angle, I can really overload this surface. And because there's such a broad surface, it wicks away the moisture. It wicks away that cold heat, keeps the temperature up. But more than likely, it'll give us a better opportunity to flip salmon, to flip burgers without something cracking or sticking, just because we have the flexibility of moving around the surface. Now, speaking of surfaces, um, we kind of mentioned some of the brass tri-ring burner there. We mentioned uh, some of the BCUs. Um, these little, this, this guy right here has more technology into it than, than I've seen in any other brands too. So we have some Wi-Fi, Bluetooth technology built into this. So our Smart HQ app can connect. And it's kind of first generation in the Smart HQ um, where I know we can on that app um, lock out the controls. Look around other brands, and, and if, you, if you find one, great. I don't think you'll find too many, maybe one, maybe, that has child lockout built into their cooktop. So I can hold down this button for three seconds, and I can lock every burner. So, you know, the, the husband or wife that drinks too much bourbon and shouldn't cook, and the kids that shouldn't be touching the cooktop are now locked out of it, and it's totally safe. Now, in that same section, there's also a timer built in. Is that important? It's not until you realize other gas cooktops don't have a timer. So instead of setting the timer for your crab cakes here, you may turn around and look for a timer somewhere else, or you're grabbing your dirty phone and setting the timer and then touching clean food. So we put it right here, nice and easy, very accessible. 
Above that, what we have are these great knobs, guys. And I have ruined more people's knobs in their homes than I care to admit, because they want me to do a catering party for 50 in a, in a kitchen that was built to serve six, right? So the first thing I do is I come and I bring this big pan and set it right on the center burner. Well, gas is totally inefficient. Just like it's hitting the bottom of this griddle right now, and it's hot because it's kicking it out the sides. Same thing happens when you put a big pan on a drop-in cooktop. The heat kicks out towards the front and it starts to touch these knobs. When these knobs are made cheaply, what happens is they melt. And then the customer says, John, um, what happened to my range? I said, ah, I have no idea. I, I think you bought the wrong one. Well, at Monogram, we use a sapphire glass. So sapphire glass is what we use to make these. It can get hot. I have ran this griddle for four or five hours and don't tell the engineering team because I'm sure they're like, oh my God, what is this guy doing? And that's okay. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. And I ran it for so long that these knobs super heat and nothing ever changes. They're about 120 degrees. It's not a big deal. It's hotter than you would normally have something at home, but they never melt. They never ripple. And I have seen the stainless, the ones that look stainless across the top, they get all kind of flecking in them and it is not cool. So again, monogram sapphire glass knobs is meant to cook and meant to last too. How are we doing on questions out there? Pretty good? Awesome. All right, I'm gonna make you guys a little bit of a, like a remoulade sauce. Um, this is a loose version. You guys can take this in any direction that you want. You know, remoulade is, is more of a classical term um, with like some capers and some mayonnaise or aioli really and lemon and, and garlic. Um, I've tried to clean it up over the years where I use a version of like Greek yogurt and a little bit of sour cream to make it a little lighter than the mayonnaise. It's all oil based. And then I make it even a little lighter um, by adding some more of that Cajun or blackening seasoning there. You grab that little juicer and add just a little bit more of that lime juice. Whoops, I'm making a mess now, salt and pepper. A little bit of extra mustard. Some more of that cilantro. And we just give that a little bit of a mix. So this is just the dressing for my crab cakes. Mix that up, have a nice tray here. And the other addition that I want to make to these is adding that fresh tomato and then some fresh avocado as well. And this is just going to give it a pop of flavor, contrast of color. We'll grab these guys here. Now, when you're plating, I love to use a large plate. You can see I've got space on there, right? Because we want to design. We want room to put all of our things. Um, I don't live with the designer, but my, my wife loves little knickknacks and she can fill a shelf with the most beautiful things in the, in the world. And she needs a large space to make sure that each one can stand out. You guys understand that better than I do, but on a plate, it's the same thing where you can see the height of the crab cakes and you can see some blank space there. So if I take even just that remoulade and you dollop and then drag your spoon through it, you can start to see, you create just a little bit of a design, but a separation from the food to the sauce. Then if we take that tomato, we can pile some on top there. This Maybe smells little... oh, it's great. It's working for you, Joe? Yeah, the smell of it works great. I love it. I have the updated version. I actually sent Joe a care package of these, didn't I? <laughs> so we put a little avocado in there, just on top. 
and garnish with a little salt and pepper. You could put some extra lime juice on top of here. If there's like a picante sauce or you know, like a house hot sauce, whether it's Puerto Rican or wherever you like, um, definitely add that to this. But I think this dish looks pretty darn tasty. I'm gonna have some of this for lunch, maybe crab cake sandwich. We could do a crab cake sandwich really easy for a lot of folks with this same recipe. So I hope you use that 100%. Now, before I move off, say a couple other things about this uh, this cooktop here. Um, as I said before, the griddle's removable. It's nice, take it to your grill if you want, take it to the sink to clean. Underneath there, again, just two 10,000 BTU burners. As a chef, I like the idea of my griddle living on the cooktop surface. It makes makes folks look like, or think that I know what I'm doing. Like, oh, they've got a griddle built in, you know, they're big time chefs. So we like the idea of just showing that off. Now, all of these burners here, turn those off. Now, not only did I feel the heat on those burners, but remember every single burner goes down to 140 degrees. Um, but there's actually an indicator light on all of those knobs too uh, that illuminates when they're hot. So although I felt the heat here, when I looked down, I said, oh, those are both still on. So it gave me the peace of mind to turn them off. And then again, these grates, they're all removable. So they're in three sections. I have customers um, that have strength concerns um, about how heavy their pro ranges are and how heavy those grates can be for them. And they still want the pro range experience where this gives you in a gas cooktop still that same kind of experience, but with a little lighter grate because we break them into three pieces. We also leave the rubber foot on that grate in the drip tray. So this is a porcelainized uh, drip tray here that uh, the rubber feet are now left in there. So if you technically in a monogram oven, you could self clean these grates and have them returned right back to new. The other thing I'll point out to you guys here is that, yeah, we have high heat, we have low heat, but we accomplish that again, just like in our pro range setup with that dual flame stack technology, where you guys know there's two uh, rings of holes. The top ring of holes gives me high heat and the bottom ring of holes gives me the low 140 degrees. The burner cap comes off too for cleanability. For both, this can, this can go into self-clean. Don't do that with this one. I use a little blue soap and that magic eraser. But by removing that, now we can really access our, our sealed drip pan and clean that very, very easily. All right, so on the griddle side again, guys, use that on your grill, use that on your range. Buy a nonstick one if you want something easy for Saturday mornings. I, I, I believe in multiple versions of things. So if you want a nonstick one that you're using just for eggs and plastic spatulas and French toast, um, buy a griddle uh, just for that. But when you start to get into steaks and potatoes and things where you, you kind of want to get the char off of, that's when you need a serious cooking product um, where you want to use a metal spatula on, whether it's the induction one, the pro range, um, or a cast iron pan, or the one that comes with our gas cooktop. Um, you always want to get a nice cast iron one for that purpose. Other than that, I think that's my feelings on griddle cooking. I think you guys understand that I love it. I think that there's a lot of different ways that we can do it. Um, and I don't think any of, uh, any, of them, any of them are bad. What we, we need to understand and what our customers need to understand is that there is a learning curve, right? You know, you, you have to you have to accept that the heat is different. You have to accept um, that you need to preheat your griddle. You have to accept there's a little bit of different cleaning process. But through all that, what we get is a more enjoyable, another way to cook and um, a way to show off and make large format food indoors and outdoors. So before I ask about questions, I want to go ahead and give that little um I want to give this spoon rest away. So everybody get their, their typers ready there. Um, I've talked a lot about monogram product. I talked about pro range. I didn't mention anything about refrigeration, which I love and dishwashers. Uh, if I could draw this out anymore, I'd go to a commercial break and then ask the question, uh, but I won't. So guys, I want you to tell me when I talk about our knobs, 
what material do we, what type of glass do we use to keep the tops from melting? What type of glass do we use on our knobs? Correct spelling, I can't spell it, so somebody else uh, will, will proof that, you know. Type it in the chat box. First one in, gets a million dollar spoon rest. So if I get this right this week, it looks like Glenda is our winner. Sapphire glass, that is correct. Love it. Glenda, Love. Glenda, if you'll go ahead, we'll send you an email and then you'll just provide us your address and we'll get it over to you. Cool. Um, any questions out there, guys, cooking wise, what's going on at the showroom about future events, anything about the recipe or, or that you've seen on the monogram table talks this week? John, so oh. question. I know you talked about the, grid the griddles before, um, and I don't know if you mentioned this. I don't think you did, but can you put that griddle outside on your grill if you wanted to, too? Oh, yes, definitely. That that one could go outside. You know, you might have to clean it up a little bit on the bottom, um, depending on whether you're burning propane, natural gas, or how you're using it. Um, but no, that could that could go right on there. I've done that before. Is it technically designed for that? I, I don't know. The engineers may say no, but um, I know that I've used it in that way. OK, great. Hey, John. Yeah. How do you clean up that griddle pan when you're done using it? Yeah, so this one that's removable, um, I like to put it in the sink, run hot water on it, and then just kind of take a scrubby over over the top. You don't want to use too much soap or scrub too hard. You really want to treat it like a cast iron dish. Um, but the way we think about cleaning cast iron, there's some really interesting articles out there. And if I even mention any of the anything that they mention, um, I know it's a point of contention for old school cast iron owners where we don't do anything but a salt scrub. We would never put, pass a scrubby over it. Oh, God forbid we touch it with soap, um, things like that. Um, and I, I just fall into a little bit of a different camp on there where I, I do eliminate bacteria. I do run water over it. I'm not afraid of a salt scrub, but I, I usually on that griddle finish a little bit of olive oil or cheap uh, canola oil on the top so it absorbs it. It keeps that nice kind of black sheen to it. Great. Well, we great, have, guys. Yeah. One more question. From Please. Linda, she said, is it better to purchase a range top, the permanent griddle, or just use the add-on griddle? And yeah. maybe she means the pro range that comes with the permanent griddle? Yeah, I, I love that question. And I know there's other manufacturers out there that may make a range that has like more of a multi-function in that center space where you can go from grill to griddle to, I'm not sure what else they, they do exactly. But I know that when we look at grills and griddles, they kind of want different heat and they want a different surface to it. And I worry about making something in that space multi-function um, because if, if we didn't just make a griddle to do one job, what I worry about is, when we change it over to a grill, you get a subpar grill. And then when you change it back over to a griddle, you get a griddle that doesn't quite work as, as well. Um, so in the monogram line, when you get a griddle, it's always a griddle. When you get a grill, it's always a grill in the pro range or the statement range series. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is there any difference though in this instance where the griddle's just sitting on top? Is that, I mean, Still yeah, a little bit. I think. Yeah, a little bit. Where um, on a pro range, the burner that's below the griddle surface, and, and mind you, on a pro range, the griddle surface does not remove. The burner below the griddle surface on the pro range is built just for the griddle. Where in this case, we beefed up the griddle and made it thicker and heavier and made the sides kind of fold down a little bit more because we're using 10,000 BTU burners that are designed to have a pot on them mostly. Um, so the, the, the evenness of heating on a pro range built just to be a griddle is going to be better than, than, this, than this setup. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. And I don't mean that to knock one or, or the other either, because you saw I did some pretty good crab cakes right, right here too, so.
Yeah, I think it just comes back to the flexibility and giving people the options that they want. So either way works. Yeah, great. yeah absolutely. Um, well, that's all the questions I think we have in the chat, um, unless anybody else has anything they want to ask quickly. Well, awesome. You guys, again, it's been a great week, um, a great few weeks spending time with you in the kitchen here in Chicago and my, my, my own personal home. I love the questions. I hope you use the recipes. I hope you claim them out as your own because we all got to brag about that. You know, uh, cooking and, and recipes happen in a couple of different ways, you know, uniquely where you just come up with it or you find an idea and build on it. So take these, make them your own and let me know if you have any questions. You know, as a chef with Monogram, I'm always here to help you. Just an extension of your business and your client's ownership experience. So use and abuse us. I cannot wait to see you guys next week. So I look forward to that.